I'm Michael Jenkins. I'm a vascular surgeon at St. Mary's Hospital Imperial College in London. I've been debating at the London Aortic Symposium. The motion was, what is the best treatment for a 60-year-old man with an aortic aneurysm? I had to make the argument for open surgery. I think I made that argument based on durability and the fact that the number of reinterventions for endovascular repair over the time frame with a 60-year-old man is likely to survive is not as good as having one fix and having it done in one go. We had a good debate looking at data and I think that has been influenced by some of the proposals from the UK NICE guideline committee suggesting that actually no treatment in the UK should involve EVAR for elective intervention for aortic aneurysms. Um, my feeling is that that is completely wrong, but there is perhaps a case at the lower end of the age spectrum, which is unusual in the UK. It is unusual to see patients in their early 60s presenting with aneurysms, but those are the patients who may actually benefit from open surgery because the data suggests they may live long enough to accrue the durability benefit even though early on there's a slight increase in mortality compared to an endovascular approach. I think one of the difficulties from a patient perspective is that endovascular is much more attractive to them. There's a much faster recovery, they get out of hospital quicker, there's much less scarring, and upfront ability to get back to normal life is very important for patients. And perhaps they're not thinking so much about what's gonna happen in 10 and 15 years time. Whereas, that is very rational if someone is in their middle 70s, late 70s, early 80s. Perhaps for a 60-year-old, they need to think about durability a bit more carefully and at the benefit they will get. The other side of a coin is that although open surgery is perhaps declining in certain global areas, in the UK, the results from open surgery has actually improved quite a lot. If you go back to the VascuNet data from 2007, when we had a particularly poor outcome from open surgery with an upfront 7% 30-day mortality, the work that the Vascular Society has been doing with quality improvement strategy has meant that that's come right down. And one of the points I made yesterday was the nearest or the closest data we've got to a 60-year-old man comes from aneurysm screening, which involved 65-year-old men, or sometimes a bit older with those who've been on surveillance. And that group, half of them in the UK are operated by open surgery and the other half by EVAR. And in that group, the overall 30-day mortality at the moment is just under 1%, which suggests that the early outcome from open surgery has improved. And that's probably improved from the fact that the treatment arm of the screening programs are in hospitals with a good quality assurance that these networks in the UK have meant that hospitals performing low volumes of aortic surgery have been merged so that all units are now um, providing a higher quality service in, in a networked environment. So if we think about the draft proposals from NICE, which suggests that no patient should have elective EVA, I think that is wrong because I think at the extreme ages, at the, for the very elderly, there probably is evidence that they won't uh, get enough benefit from intervention because they're probably going to die of their comorbidity. The difficulty for clinicians, of course, is not having an objective tool to identify those patients. At the other end of the age spectrum, the very young patients who probably do have good life expectancy, they may benefit from open repair because they won't have the surveillance and the reinterventions that comes with an endovascular repair. Uh, and that group probably can be selected out, made fitter by prehabilitation and uh, improved sufficiently to get good early outcome and then accrue the benefit of that intervention longer term. But there is a large group in the middle that actually are going to benefit from EVA and it'll be a real shame if those patients are not allowed to have EVA um, because of a, a broad-based guideline. The omission, I think, in these proposed guidelines is that there's no consideration of anatomy 
And I think anatomy is key in defining which patients are going to do well from intervention and which aren't. And in patients with good anatomy for uh, endovascular repair, um, it is likely that they will do well long term. Devices have improved year on year and we've got some very good devices now. We are guilty, I think, as a clinical community to, as soon as we get a new device, we push the envelope and we use it perhaps in more um, aggressive and adverse anatomy. And then we're surprised five years later when that, those results aren't quite as good as we'd hoped. I think if we restricted ourselves to within the company's instructions for use and used it, as they say in the state, on label, I think our outcomes will be better and there's good evidence in the literature about that and therefore if we can identify the groups that are going to benefit and use EVA for those and use something else for the other groups, be it open or a more extensive custom proximal repair, well that would be a more appropriate use of a technology.